Hello, all you Pennsylvania students. Good evening, good afternoon. Um, I'm just gonna uh, make a few housekeeping comments and then I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Lucy and Caitlin so that they can take um, tell you all the wonderful things about New Jersey Institute of Technology. Um, the first is that uh, um, these sessions are being recorded so they will be available to you to go back and review uh, later on should you need to do so because I'm sure there's information that you're you're hearing that maybe you want to go back and listen to again so uh, please feel free to do that at uh, www.pacac.org slash virtual. Also, um, you can sign up for other sessions because there's still some left. I mean, we're, time is running out now, but there's still some left that you can sign up for. So please uh, go to the website and take a look at PACAC.org. And then um, your camera and microphone are off. Uh, you will not be able to, you know, and some of you is probably more comfortable doing that anyway, you will not be able to um, show yourself or uh, have your microphone uh, on so that you can speak. It's best that you simply ask your questions in the Q&A box. So use the Q&A button to type your questions in uh, for the presenters at any time. And uh, Caitlin will be able to respond to all your questions. So without further ado, let me turn it over to them so that they can uh, tell you all the wonderful things about NJIT. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Lucy. I'm one of the counselors here at NJIT, and I am joined by uh, my colleague, Caitlin Kane. She's going to be helping in the chat section. So I'm going to share my screen, and then we will get going. Okay. So welcome to NJIT virtually. I do wanna draw your attention to the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. There is a QR code there. So if you are interested in learning more information about NJIT, you can scan that and fill out our digital inquiry card. Or if you wanna email us with any questions or give us a call, our um, contact information is listed there as well. So we will get into it. <clears throat> any questions you have, please feel free to leave them in the chat. And like I said, my colleague Caitlin will be able to answer them for you. So NJIT today, we offer over 128 programs on campus, undergraduate and graduate. And we do have 70 plus research centers on campus with specialized labs. Our enrollment is 11,400 students and that does consist of undergraduate as well as postgraduate, um, but undergraduate numbers is around 8,000 students. And we are ranked as one of the nation's elite research universities with an R1 classification. So we are one of three schools in New Jersey that hold this classification. Some average numbers and highlights for you, our average SAT score is a 1295, the average ACT is a 28, and the average GPA is a 3.6, <clears throat> excuse me. We are a state school, so the majority of our students do come from New Jersey, but we do have some students that come from outside of New Jersey as well as international students. Um, that QR code is gonna be on every slide, so if you didn't get a chance to do it in the first one, it will be throughout the whole presentation as well, just an FYI. Our academic overview, the student to faculty ratio is 17 to one, and our average class size is around 25 students. Now that's not to say you might have a lecture class and maybe it's chemistry or physics. It might be a little bit larger. It could be 50 or 60 students, but you wouldn't be seeing anything larger than that. Um, we are not a large school overall. We are about med med medium size. Gosh, it's hard to get my words out today. Uh, we're about a medium size school. So um, classes are gonna be a little bit smaller, which I personally find. Um, more comfortable. I think it's an easier learning experience. 98% of our faculty hold the highest degree in their field, and all of our programs are fully accredited by the appropriate accrediting boards, commissions, and associations. In addition to that, um, our faculty are also conducting research in addition to teaching our students as well. So that's pretty awesome. And you can see some pictures here of students and faculty working on research. Um, most More often than not, it's in our makerspace, which you'll get to see a little picture of in a second. Um, as far as colleges and what we offer, we have six different colleges on campus. Our oldest and largest is our Newark College of Engineering. This has 18 undergraduate degree programs, 21 masters, and nine doctoral degree programs. And just some little shout outs of different programs that we do offer. Um, 
I like to point out the concrete industry management program because I also recruit specifically for that program. Now you might be thinking concrete, I can get a degree in concrete. You actually can. It is a four year program bachelor's of science and you do uh, come away with a business administration minor as well. And fun fact, if you are, as most of you are, uh, because this is a PACAC, you are in Pennsylvania. Um, if you apply to the concrete industry management program as a Pennsylvania resident, you are eligible for New Jersey state tuition. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that is the only program uh, that I'm aware of that offers this as a perk. There is also a $4,000 scholarship that comes along with this concrete industry management program. If you are interested in learning more about it, please let me know. I would love to you know, share, share more information about it, but I won't talk too much more about that. Um, another thing I like to point out on our engineering page, if you're interested in engineering, but you're really just not 100% sure about what avenue you want to pursue, general engineering is going to be the best bet for you because we like to call that our undecided engineering. So like I said, if you're kind of lost or not 100% sure, that's going to be your best starting off point. And then once you get into the swing of things with life on campus, you can kind of branch out and see what is a better fit for you, or maybe general is a good fit for you. I also want to point out the open houses and major spotlight events that we have. They're listed in the bottom right hand corner. They are, <clears throat> excuse me, some of them have already passed, but we are also hosting events in December as well. So any questions about that, please feel free to let us know and we can send you the information. Next, we have our Hillier College of Architecture and Design. Um, we have bachelors of architecture here, as well as digital design, industrial and interior design. Uh, the difference between the five-year and the four-year, excuse me, the five-year is obviously it's a year longer than our four-year program, but the five-year you come away with a certificate as an architect, whereas with the four-year program, you just have a degree in architecture. So my, no, nine times out of 10, in order to be an architect, you must have that certification that states you are an architect. Uh, so that's the difference between the five-year and the four-year. Uh, and then again, the open houses, again, some of the dates have passed, but we will be hosting some more in December. Next, we have our College of Science and Liberal Arts. This is a pretty cool college within, um, diff there's different avenues, um, science and non-science, as it would state, science of College of Science and Liberal Arts. Um, we have two new majors that are relatively new for us. I believe forensic science came out about a year ago. Uh, and then we also have a cyber psychology program. If you are interested in law or perhaps medicine, our College of Science and Liberal Arts is a good starting off point as we do have a law, technology, and culture program, as we also have biochemistry, chemistry, um, and biology majors as well, which a lot of our students that wish to pursue a medical degree will go through biology or biochemistry. So those are good options uh, to consider for that. Next, we have our Martin Tuckman School of Management. And just a fun fact about Martin Tuckman, he made his way in the world in the shipping container industry. Uh, and so if you ever get a chance to visit our campus, um, you know, hopefully Corona is not much more of a thing, much longer, fingers crossed. But um, once it's safe and able, we actually have some shipping containers on campus. One of them is where our students and staff are getting tested for COVID. And then as the next couple of weeks and months progress, we will be having a shipping container coffee shop, which is a program that's through our Martin Tuckman School of Management and our design and architecture students are also going to be involved in that in planning and seeing how that's going to work out. So that's a fun fact about Martin Tuckman. But anyway, about the School of Management, um, we offer a business degree and then new for us this month, I want to say month, couple weeks, uh, is financial technology or fintech. We like to abbreviate things at NJIT. So if you hear us saying something that's shortened and you're like, what are they talking about? Fintech, that's what that is. <laughs> but anyway, um, different avenues within the business program. You can specialize in accounting, finance. You can do business with financial technology special specialization, or you can just do fintech on its own. And then we also have innovation and entrepreneurship management, uh, information systems, as well as marketing. Um, the next Martin Tuckman open house is the first week of December, if I'm not mistaken. Whereas the dates that are listed here have, actually there's one tomorrow, but anyway. Uh, next we have our <clears throat> Yingwu College of Computing. This is our newest college on campus and I would venture to guess our most popular. Um, 
we have a bunch of different programs that are listed, business and information systems, computer science. Um, there's a handful of these that are like, for example, our computer science is a, we offer a bachelor's of science, but also a bachelor's of arts. So there's a little bit of difference between the two. We also offer information systems, information technology, and web and information systems. And again, some open houses are listed there. For our honors program, so just some notes or housekeeping for honors, I should say. If you apply to honors um, you and you are not accepted or you're not successful in honors, you may still be eligible for admission into NJIT generally, if that makes sense. Um, so I always suggest the students try. You never know, you might get in. Um, there's a lot of financial incentive in um, applying for the honors college in addition to um, you get honors courses and thesis level research opportunities, professional development experiences. The best part is on-campus housing in our honors college, which from what I've heard from the students is the better option because the washing and dry washers and dryers are on the same floor as their dorm rooms. So that's a big plus. And then there's also different accelerated programs you can participate in as well as community service. If you have super specific questions about the Honors College, let us know, we can put you in the right direction for who to contact. And then as far as the programs through the Honors College, um, they are a seven year program or six year. More often than not, they are medicine, dental, optometry. And then we also have physical therapy, physician's assistant and law programs. Um, I will say quickly here, but then I'll mention it again in a couple minutes. If you are going to be applying to the Honors College, you must have your SAT ACTs. Um, general admission to NJIT is test optional. However, that is not the case for the Honors College. So again, just keep that in mind. Our residence life on campus is a little bit quieter nowadays, um, but it has been pretty popping in the past. We do have six residence halls on campus. Um, the two that freshmen and sophomores usually reside in are either Redwood or Cypress. And then the rest is usually, you know, if you do wanna live on campus, you're more than welcome to. We do have Greek life on campus as well. And we have over 140 clubs and organizations on campus. We are also a D1 school. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is fun that's on campus. Um, we are in a downtown city setting. So parking, if you wish to park on campus, you do need to pay for. Um, and if you want to live on campus your freshman year, you can, you don't have to, it's not a requirement. But I always like to suggest at least trying it out for your first year, see how you like it and then go from there. For um, requirements as far as admissions for freshmen. So first year, first year um, applicant right out of high school, you need to complete your application on the Common App. There is an application fee, which is a $75 fee, high school transcript, as well as a letter of recommendation. So this letter is from someone who knows you in a professional or an academic setting, whether that be your boss, your school counselor, um, a coach perhaps. And then as far as the architecture and design programs, you are also required to um, submit a portfolio. So that's anywhere between 10 to 20 pieces of original work. I've seen students submit poetry, photography, um, 3D sketches, 3D printing, uh, so on and so forth. If you are currently in an art class, suggest um, helping or having your teacher help you with the portfolio. You know, they can give advice on different things and what you, what you could um, submit. As far as the academic profile, we are looking for a B average or a 3.0 out of a 4.0 scale with strong math and science grades. And if you're gonna be applying for a STEM related major, pre-calc is a requirement. And then as far as the SAT or ACTs, we are test optional for fall 21 and spring of 22. Um, but if you do have your SATs and you wanna submit them, if they're in the ranges of our averages, so 1295 for SATs, or 28 for the ACTs, you are more than welcome to submit them. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, SAT, ACT is still required for Honors College. They are looking for a 3.5 GPA out of a 4.0 scale. They also are looking for two letters of recommendation, a personal essay, an interview, which happens after the fact. And then um, SAT wise, they're looking for 1370, with that's reading and math combined or a 30 on the ACT or higher um, and honors and AP courses are not required but they are strongly recommended and encouraged. For transfer students 
we um, are looking for a completed application, which is on our website. Uh, again, application fee, which is $75, and then any of your transcripts that you, uh, from where you've attended previously. We do hold instant decision days. You register for them on our website and they are held every Thursday. So it's a chance for you to meet with um, some of our transfer team and they can review your application and then you'll receive a decision right then and there. As far as the academic profile, we are looking for at least 15 semester hours on your transcript with English composition or Comp 101, English 101, um, and then mathematics. It's typically pre-calc for most majors uh, and then a 2.5 or higher for your GPA. And also, if you're going to be applying for the architecture or design programs, a portfolio is also required. As far as tuition and cost, um, our in-state is $17,674, out-of-state is $33,386, and our room and board is, let's just call it $13,000. Uh, I did mention earlier, you don't have to live on campus if you don't want to, so the room and board is at your discretion. Um, but as far as being in Pennsylvania, you would be um, out-of-state tuition. We do have um, two different op opportunities for financial aid, FAFSA, which is um, based off income, taxes, so on and so forth, and then merit-based, GPA, SAT, ACT scores. Um, I have come across a handful of scholarships in my time that are for being left-handed. I'm left-handed. I've seen ones for people who have natural red hair, blue eyes, they're a twin, they're a triplet, they speak six languages. There's so many different merit-based or I, what I like to call interesting, um, unique scholarship opportunities. Um, so that's just a handful that I've come across in the past, but a great resource is to check with your school counselors. There's also lists on the College Board website. If you use Naviance in your school or if you use Schoology, that's another option. They always have um, scholarships posted there as well. And then if you are looking for additional scholarships, we have some information on our website. As far as um, students that are incoming students, about 80% do receive some sort of financial aid, whether it is need-based or merit-based. And then if you are looking to fill out the FAFSA, it is open now. You just need to submit that code that's listed on the screen and then it'll get sent to our financial aid department. We have a um, office on campus called CDS, Career Development Services. And essentially their job is to help you find a job. They can help you with resume writing, uh, mock interviews, cover letters, so on and so forth. Um, internships as well, which is pretty nice. And then on the screen, there's just a, a little snapshot of students that have graduated with us and they are now working at L'Oreal. Facebook, um, Stryker is a big employer for our grads, as is Prudential Center. We have some students working at NASA, which I think is so cool. Um, there's students that are working in, or I should say alumni, working in the military, I believe Department of Defense and the Air Force, which is pretty interesting. Um, and then here's just another little snapshot. We do also have some students that work at Boeing, which I think is so interesting. Uh, and then, like I said, Prudential and then some of the other um, companies are listed there. As far as return on investment, we are ranked in the top 2% for return on investment. So essentially, that means the amount of money that you spend on your tuition, you're going to get back quicker because median starting salary for our graduates are, is, is $65,000 or higher. Um, and 90% of our students are finding jobs within one year of graduation and often have an average of three job offers. Uh, and then alumni have reported that their mid-career salary is over $100,000. I think that's insane. I wish. <laughs> amazing op amazing that that's um, available to our students. Um, as far as important dates, um, we have early action one. So the deadline is coming up. It's next Sunday, Saturday. It's coming up, November 15th. Early action two is December 15th. And then rolling out admissions, we are March 1st. Um, also, just to note, we are non-binding in our early action decisions. So um, essentially what that means, if you're not familiar with that, say you apply, we say yes to you, and then you can choose if you say yes back to us. So non-binding. Uh, transfers, our fall semester deadline is June 1st, and then spring semester is November 15th. And like I mentioned, we do have the instant decision days that are every Thursday. You do need to register for those online, but it is free. If you are going to be submitting your um, test scores, you do need to submit a code and then the FAFSA code is there as well. 
any additional questions or comments or concerns after tonight and you want to connect, I will leave my email address. I think we can leave email addresses. Um, if not, then you can send us an email or give us a call. And then here is a snapshot of the open houses that are coming up again. So if there's any that you want to take a screenshot of and make note of, that will be great. Um, but other than that, that's all I have for you. We'll open it up to questions and answers. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen. Uh, how do I do this? I'll stop sharing. There we go. All right. Thank you all for attending. Uh, any questions, please let us know. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, and so um, since we've come to the end of our our time, that was really well done, Lucy. Uh, Caitlin, Caitlin, thank you, you, thank you. for that moral support. You know? um, I learned some things about uh, Media Institute of Technology, like that concrete management program. Pretty I, interesting. So cool. Pretty interesting. <laughs> Um, but uh, well, I just tell all of you students, thank you for joining us. And um, uh, after the session closed, there will be a quick survey. So please fill out the four question quick survey. And you can, again, you can sign up for much more sessions. Remember, packact.org slash virtual. Uh, and also remember that the recording will be available to you um, as soon as we're done. Okay, so have a great evening. Thank you, ladies, for your fine work. And thank uh, you. All, thank you. Um, Have a great Take evening. Care. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Mm -hmm.